I'm Redken Master Artist Ruth Roach, and I want to show you how to create this look. So I've sectioned the fringe area away, and then what we've done through the, the back and the sides is a vertical section just at the back of the ear based on the natural fall of the hair. So I'm starting on the side. I'm going to work with a little bit of tension, a horizontal section, and then I'm going to point cut this hair so it sits just at the bottom of the ear. I'm working shallow so that we create a little bit more of a substantial guide and then we're going to work into deeper point cutting as we move up the head. So I cut the other side to match the guide. Now I'm going to work through this whole side and then move back to the other side. So I've taken another horizontal section. What I'm going to do is elevate the, the first section at about 45 degrees and I'm going to use quite a bit of tension so that we get graduation here. Here's my cutting line right there. So what I'm going to do is go a little bit beyond it and a little bit into it so that we create a much chunkier line along the bottom. So you can see from the front here my first guide is elevated and that's my stationary guide. Everything else is going to come to that and just follow the guide from underneath. So you can see how we've got our horizontal weight line here. What I've done is taken a section that's a very steep diagonal into the nape, and we're now going to connect that to her existing length in the perimeter. There's my guide, and what I'm gonna do is create an angle that goes in towards the nape. So we wanna meet up with that length that's on the side there. So you can see that I'm taking sections on the side as well when I'm moving up the back of the head and that's just to keep it balanced with the section that's right next to it. So remember I had that first section elevated out. So my second section needs to match the elevation of that section. So there's my guide. There's my guide from underneath. And then I'm going to work my way across and angle my fingers in as I work around towards the bottom. So as I'm working up the head, remembering that I need to keep my elevation through the side consistent with what we did on the side in the front. So as I work up into the crown area, what I want to do is subdivide the hair just so I have a little bit more control of the section. as I go. Working my way right into the center and across towards the other side. So the crown area is, can be a little bit tricky because of growth patterns. So what I've done is combed it with the wide teeth of the comb into natural fall. And what that does is it gives us the separation between the hair so you can see that the larger teeth leave pieces or vertical lines of hair. What I'm gonna do then is just pick up one of those lines. And if we were gonna keep this very heavy and not layered, we'd wanna be very, very careful about how much tension we're using here. And then just working my way right across the center so you can see how that hair stays in natural fall so that we don't end up combing it over here, cutting it and having it not blend in with the nape. So what I'm going to do in the center is I'm going to comb the hair into a vertical section, letting those, the root area come straight where it lives, just combing that out, switching to the wide teeth, and then just angling in. So you can see that I'm keeping my elevation really low, and we're just connecting that in with the underneath. And that way our weight line connects with what we've done here but we don't have a hard line from cutting it blunt this way. So now you can see as the hair starts to lift that we get our weight line, it's not A-line. 
it's it's rounded or rounded horizontal because of the way we cut it from the sides into the back. I'm gonna take a section straight down the middle on the top of the head. And what I'm gonna do is just comb it straight up. And we're just gonna take this and round it out towards the front. So we've just gone from this to this now. So if we look at it from here, we're going up and around. We don't wanna take away from our weight line, which is basically from the bottom of the crown down. We're not touching that. We're touching it from there up. So I dropped out the fringe area and I'm working with a horizontal section across the front. We want to create a choppier texture and a shorter length at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut her hair about halfway up the forehead. And I'm going to point cut it first, similar to what we did on the sides, and just get that length in there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in, hold my fingers closer to the hairline and just take deeper points out of the hair. So you can see how far away my fingers are from the edges. And then I'm going in and cutting more hair out. I'm gonna elevate the hair now out from the head horizontally. And I'm gonna go into this section same thing as we did on the sides, longer and shorter, longer and shorter, so that we're closing on the cutting line, some of it's shorter than our guide, some of it's longer. And what that's gonna do is give us a, a soft edge, but it's also going to bevel the edge of the fringe. Now what I'm gonna do is work from the fringe, and I'm gonna create a curved line which comes back and takes just the, the corner off of the front. So angling my fingers from the edge of the fringe. I'm gonna come down, comb it down. And just work my way down to the bottom. Now I'm just gonna drop down a few more sections, bring them towards the front and leave my corner here. And this time I'm just gonna be a little bit more loose about the line. Cause we've got our line sitting in right around the face. We wanna leave our length behind it so that it keeps a soft feel. So now what it needs is more texture, more of a choppy texture. I'm gonna elevate the hair up. I'm not gonna go too close to the scalp here, but I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna cut some different lengths in there. So some are longer, some are shorter, but we're staying away from the scalp. Going in. So let's do a few on the other side. Combing the hair up. We're going in shorter, longer, somewhere in between. And what that's giving us is a nice blunt texture on the ends of the hair. So we have blunt on the ends here and blunt on the ends inside. And you're gonna to start to see some of those pieces kicking out more. Now I'm just gonna go into the fringe area and make it a little bit more blunt and chunky. So to finish this look, what I'm gonna do is use two products from Redken. The first one is Outshine 01, and that is a polishing cream that's going to take away some of the frizz and make it nice and pliable. And then we have Velvet Gelatine 7, which has a hold factor of seven, and that's just going to give us a little bit of control, but it's not overly stiff. So the two mixed together is a really nice combination for a look like this that you wanna have some control and some definition, but still have it move. 
I'm going to go in now with a diffuser and my hands and not touch it too much so that we don't end up with something that's fuzzy. The idea is that it stays smaller, close to the head, and we use this natural texture. So I'm finishing with a little bit of Triple Pure 32. It's an extreme high hold hairspray, but it has a neutral fragrance and it's gonna really lock this style into place. So here she is finished. You can see that the shape has a roundness to it. It has a lot of texture. It's short and it's strong, but it's still soft. So I'm Ruth Roach, Redkin Master Artist, and thank you for watching.